Great, it is time for Friday Reads. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you my Friday Reads video. In my Friday Reads, I share the books that I finished, the books that I started, and anything interesting about books that I'm carrying over week to week. This week is mostly finishes and carryovers. I'm resisting starting new things because I really would like to whittle down my <laughs> currently reading. Honestly, I think at some point recently it got up to 35 and I was like, what? <laughs> My restraint is out the window, and this is why I don't do a December TBR, because by this point, it's really hard for me to keep to anything. I'm just like, I'm so not reliable. <laughs> but I have continued to read, so I am happy for that. Um, before I get into the books, I just do want to share a little bit that I am sort of participating in, in Vlogmas, um, and um, so I am trying to release a video every day in December. I have hopefully done that every day so far. It's going to be a combination of different kinds of videos my Friday reads will go up until a certain point um, and then I do have some reviews. I'm reviewing the entire Giver Quartet um, as part of my series talk types of videos which are more in-depth videos. I actually and I also have started and, and I hope people are going have already enjoyed the first one and will enjoy the rest of my um, unwrappings video. Um, videos actually unwrappings videos. I decided that I'm going to unwrap all of my wrapped books. <laughs> Which I st which is a project I started in 2017, I believe, and I did it pretty well. I did pretty well and pretty actively throughout 2017 and 2018, um, but I haven't done it almost at all in 2019 and 2020. And given that I'm not going to bookstores because of COVID, I'm like I have all of these books and I don't know what they are, and so why don't I like create my own bookstore, <laughs> you know, and unwrap all of these books because there are a lot of them. So I hope you enjoyed that. The first one went up yesterday, so it, I'll link it up in the cards for you to enjoy, um, and I am releasing them throughout the entire month of December. And then I do also hope to do some lists. Um, I did do a list on the weekend, I think was it the weekend? No, on Monday, for the um, a book list of 100 classic books um, you must read submitted by Penguin Readers. Um, and I, that was really fun to do. And so far, the response has been really good. So um, I hope that you enjoyed that. If you haven't checked it out, I will also leave it up in the description up there in the cards as well as the description box below. It was a lot of fun to do. I am more than happy to do more videos like that. I do have some lists that I'm planned in, I've planned in December, but they're a bit of a different style. But I do want to do more lists like that because it's fun. It's fun to see. I just love going through lists. I am just such a list fan. So yeah, so I have that and the reviews and some, some more videos. Um, there's lots of videos. So I hope that you enjoy that. Don't feel, feel free don't feel any pressure to watch anything, everything. Um, I know it's a lot, um, but I also know that in December, sometimes it's nice to have something new to watch every day. I know I have appreciated that in years past, so I thought this was a year that maybe I could do that. So I am doing my best to do that. I haven't filmed everything yet, so it's a bit of a still hopeful situation, um, but uh, wish me luck on that. Um, I did notice uh, uh, Courtney Pickles is also doing Vlogmas, so that's really exciting. I really enjoy Courtney's channel, and um, also Sarah um, from Sarah's Reading Nook is doing Bookmas, um, which is a particular challenge, which I actually hadn't heard about prior to this year, and uh, Chloe from Always Booked is also doing a vlog. I think she's doing a video every day. I'm not sure. I know she's, is she doing Vlogmas? Is she doing it every day? I will leave everyone's channel down below. So uh, Chloe from Always Booked is also participating. If you know anyone else that is participating in Vlogmas or Video A Day in December or Bookmas, please feel free to let me know. I love um, watching it. I think Sarah from Steeped in Books, nope, from The Bookish Knitter. I think she's doing, she's doing like um, 12, she's doing 12 days of, of Christmas. She's doing very short video reviews, which is awesome. So yeah, so lots of people are doing um, uh, different uh, takes and ideas. And uh, I'll leave, as I said, everyone's channel down below. But feel, feel free to let me know anyone you've noticed that is also doing um, anything of this ilk, holiday themed or not holiday themed. Um, mine actually aren't holiday themed at all. <laughs> I guess unwrapping things is kind of holiday-ish, kind of. So that's been really interesting to do. It's a lot of books that I haven't seen for uh, all of the book. Like everything's been wrapped up for over two years now or around two years. I did them between Christmas and New Year's in 2018. I wrapped everything, the rest of everything up. So minimum two years to uh, three and a half years. So lots of surprises. 
<laughs> so far and I'm sure there will be more. Okay, let's get on to the books. Um, so the big one that I finished this week was The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris. Um, I mentioned this last week. It's a really fun kids book. It has lots of illustrations. Oh, not that one. Like lots of illustrations throughout and it has some magic um, tricks and how to do magic-y things um, throughout. There's only there's actually a little less of these than I thought. I think there's four, um, but still, it's a lot of fun. One of them, I'm like, wow, I don't think I could pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, you know, it takes, it takes practice, as they mentioned in the book, stuff like that takes practice. So the story for this one, we follow, oh gosh, what's the protagonist named Carter, um, who's got a bit of a rough start at things, and he makes a break for a better life and comes across a carnival and um, a new set of people to interact with, and it's all, it was quite lovely and wonderful. It was just the perfect pace for me right now, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I buddy read this with Izzy, Punk Rock Girl PA. The live show uh, should be up at her channel, which I will leave down below. And um, yeah, and I, I so far she's enjoying it, so I imagine we will continue the series. But if we do, I will let you know in a Friday Reads video. I I had so much fun reading this, and I already I already bought the whole series. <laughs> Don't tell Izzy. <laughs> I can buy the whole series, but I was just like, I'm just going to buy them because it's like the holiday season and like the shipping times can be um, less uh, reliable. So I just I just went ahead and bought it. <laughs> so far, I'm enjoying it. And there is I do. There are some sort of like clues and secret things throughout the book that I need to do a little um, work on or maybe we'll do it during the live show I don't know I'm pre-filming this just a little bit so um, yeah so I still have so I have a note on the back find secret something so I'm not gonna say what it is so anyway it was a lot of fun perfect pace for me right now um, I'm also reading Dangerous Knowledge by Julianne Lindsay uh, this is for the Who Picked This Book book club uh, run by Nicole and Jen Jen and they do live shows on Nicole's channel the live show for this will be up. Um, I actually haven't finished reading this, but I will finish reading it by the time Friday rolls around. This actually follows a woman who has amnesia. So it's the amnesia trope, which I actually haven't read before. Um, it's a romantic suspense. Um, and her the she has amnesia, but she calls her help to uh, a friend of her brother's, whom she's actually never met, um, but her, her brother and him serve together, and so he comes to help her, and he's from Fortress Defense. So this is the Fortress Defense series. It's the fourth and final book in the series. Um, so far, I am enjoying it, um, and it's interesting to see the amnesia trope, and I can totally understand why it's used in novels, like, without question. It definitely gives a sense of mystery, um, and you have to start to piece things together, and, like, the character themselves actually doesn't know the answers to Thing. So that's an interesting way to follow the story. So I'm enjoying that one so far. What else am I reading? I'm also still reading. This one's taking me a little bit of time. I mentioned it last week, Twilight Man. Rod Serling and the birth of television. So uh, Rod Serling created The Twilight Zone. Um, and um, so this is a, a nonfiction story of, um, you know, a nonfiction story. Do we say that? It's a nonfiction work. Is that a better way to say it? Um, of how he came into writing and, um, and the journey of how The Twilight Zone started to happen. I'm just at the point where uh, The Twilight Zone is more prominent. There's a lot of backstory, which makes sense. So I was hoping to finish this for nonfiction November, so but I didn't. So I only got three nonfictions in, in um, November. So my goal was four. So close. Um, so what else? Um, I'm also, so I am, this one... <laughs> I posted this on Instagram and everyone's like, what is that? What is that? Is that real? And so I found the Xmas holiday, sorry, the X-Files Xmas special. And this is from 2015. Is that 15? Yeah. And it actually, oh, if you look in the ornament, it looks like the lone gunman play a part in this one. So that's awesome. It's really short. It's only 51 pages. So I guess it's a comic. It does give a previously on. So it does give some context. I read it and from it, I can't quite figure out it, where it is um, in terms of the TV series. I'm not quite sure if it follows the TV series uh, chronology or um, uh, whatchamacallit. Um, <laughs> did I actually just say whatchamacallit? Um, where is it? I had another X-Files one. 
I'm not sure, there it is, um, or any of the comic series, because I did notice that there's also a comics series, and then <clears throat> on Hoopla, this one's year zero, so I don't know if it's a prequel, um, but it looks pretty cool, like, you know, so, but this one was published in 2017, so it doesn't predate the holiday special. I imagine the holiday special can be read at a sequence, so I'll probably start with that and then see where things go. Um, I'm not actually super feeling the holiday-ness yet. Um, it feels a little early for me to be doing holiday reads, but I do, um, I think I will manage the X-Files one because it's X-Files and it's only 50 pages and because uh, I've been doing other holiday stuff. I have my Christmas lights up and um, I've been having a lot of hot chocolate, so I don't know if that, can, that counts. Um, and I got my David's tea calendar, and yeah, so, but I do have another Christmas title on the docket, and that is The Twelve Slays of Christmas by Jacqueline Frost, which is a uh, pen name or a pseudonym for Julianne Lindsay. This is again for the Who Picked This Book book club, and the live show will be the second Tuesday in December, no, Wednesday, it'll be the 9th, I believe, the 9th, so I am planning on reading that, um, and uh, hopefully I am starting to get to the point where I'm finding it harder and harder to commit to a different reading, I just, this happens to me in December, so I'm going to do my best to read it, I'll probably go to the live show whether I finish the book or not, to be honest, because they're just so much fun, um, and so yeah, we're reading that, and then the knife that stole Christmas, the knife before, the, the second one, in that series, the Christmas tree murder series, I think. So, but other than that, I think because I'm a little flighty, I am going to try and do my best to, to finish off a couple of the books that I am in the middle of. So I picked eight titles that I'm currently reading that are all for different projects that I'm working on this year. I don't think I will be able to finish them all, but if I finish a couple of them, I think that would be great because then I can clear the decks a little bit for next year. Some of these really are longer titles. And I may or may not get to them, but I just thought I'd put this together as like a sort of slight, you know, TBR and um, just I'm just going to stick it in a, a list in my Kindle so that I know that these are things that I should read so that I can finish um, goals for the year. Because sometimes I'm just like this week, honestly, I've just been like, I just keep on like starting new things and that's fine. I just but I. <laughs> having some direction would be good. So here are the eight titles that hopefully I will be working on in the next little while. Uh, first up is Tess of the Dubervilles by Thomas Hardy. This is for my Those Books project. This is one of the least likely ones that I am to finish because it is really, really long and the last Hardy I read, it took me a long time to read. But even if I make progress on it, it's less to read next year. Uh, Blood Magic by Nora Roberts. This is the third book in the Cousins O'Dwyer series, which is a paranormal romance series set in Ireland. Uh, it's got a bit of a historical like piece to it, but it's generally current day set. I really like this. I would love to finish this. Um, I don't quite know why I haven't gotten to it. I tend to read one romance at a time and I'm in the middle of a couple of others. So that's a reason, but it's on my stacking the series for this year for which I've done horribly. But if I finish this, I finish one more series and I think I'll really enjoy the book. I've been really looking forward to reading the story about the couple it's focused on so seriously. I should just get back to it. Uh, Pirate's Passion by Lisa Kessler. This is the second book in the Sentinels of Savannah series. This is for my Romance A to Z challenge. I do not have a title that starts with the letter P yet. Um, again, I'm not doing great on that one. I think I might make it to 13 out of 26 <laughs> for letters this year, but still that actually would probably be up from last year. And um, it's just a fun challenge to sort of broaden um, my reading for romance. And I'm, I read Magnolia Mystic for this, which is the first book, and I loved it. It's Immortal Pirate paranormal romance but con current day set it's awesome it's awesome I love it <laughs> uh, next up okay Starship Troopers by Robert Heinlein uh, this one I started at really bad timing uh, so I haven't gotten back to it but it's on the oldest of my Goodreads TBR list as well as my sci-fi fantasy and weird list um, and um, I think this is one I should just I should just plow through like I should just I should, I don't, I, sh I could read it with more of a critical eye um, or something. I think I just need to pick an approach, whether I'm just going to like read a bit every day or, or read it critically or read it melodramatically. Sometimes that works with me, like read it as if it's a dramatic reading. 
I don't know why that works. I don't know. So this one I don't quite know how to take. So we'll see. Ah, the Girl Who Played With Fire by Stig Larsson. This is the second in the Millennial Trilogy that then became more books. It's a mystery um, thriller. I have seen the films, the first three films, so I know the story of this one. I started it like in March or April and I haven't come back to it relatively recently at all. It's a longer title at close to 600 pages or maybe it's 500. Uh, I don't have a huge draw to this. It's on my oldest on my Goodreads TBR. That's the reason why I am reading it. And this is the second time it's gone on hiatus. So I don't know whether I should just call it quits. Um, that would also be like a goal. Like if I decide not to read it, that would also meet the challenge to myself. That's what my oldest on my Goodreads TBR is to either read it or decide not to read it. But I don't know what I'm going to do. It's harsher content, so I don't know if December is a good time to read it. So I don't know if that'll happen. What else do we have? Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Uh, this is a speculative fiction book that has a bit of a... That has a Shakespearean quality to it. Or, or setting, or content, or theme. It's about people who produce Shakespeare, but it has a speculative fiction sort of setting. I started, I wish I had read this before this year. Um, I don't know if enough time has passed for me to pick this one up, so I'm not sure about that one. I do want to read it. It's also Canadian, so it's very frustrating, very frustrating. And then the other two are uh, The Born Identity by Robert Ludlum. I am not very far into this, 64 pages and it's 600 pages. So this one feels pretty unlikely. Although that said, it's very fast paced. I, this is one I did it in volumes, so I have two other volumes. So um, I am enjoying it actually a fair amount. I just haven't come back to it very often. So I don't know what's going on there. It's one of the oldest on my Goodreads TBR. And then last up, we have Sword Breaker by Jennifer Robertson. This is a fantasy novel. I am so, I have 40 pages left. Honestly, I really just need to finish this one. Um, it is, um, I've already read it. So it's a reread for me and I want to finish off the series. I read the first four books when they were released and then they made the series longer. Um, and so I haven't, um, and I did read the fifth book, but I would like to finish the series. So actually my goal for this year is not only to finish the fourth book, but also the fifth book. So I really need to get on it. I don't know why I've been, re like every time I come back to it, I enjoy it. Although this time reading this one of the series, I do see some things I didn't notice when I originally read it, um, like pulling, like I didn't notice that um, some of the groups are definitely, there's inspiration drawn from actual um, groups, like actual um, belief systems and stuff like that. I did not pick on up on that when I originally read it. So I'm feeling a little surprised and uncomfortable about that especially because it's one of my favorite series I don't know if it crosses any lines or anything like oh there was one thing in this one that was like oh I don't know about that so there was one thing and so I think that made me a bit uncomfortable so I haven't come back to it so but because I've read the next book I feel like um like I should just I should just finish it I should just finish like seriously 40 I should do it today today Shannon today anyway and then get on to the fifth book. Because um, also rereading is a nice thing to do, I find, when it comes to the holidays. There's a lot less pressure. You already know the story. You can just enjoy the parts you enjoy. And also for me, honestly, I fall asleep a lot when I'm reading. So <laughs> sometimes rereading is good for that. So we'll see where things go. Those are eight options for the next little while in addition to uh, the X-Files comic, which I'm very much looking forward to and the 12 says slays of christmas so there you go um i have one other thing at the bottom here grinchathon also grinchathon hopefully um i at the time of filming this i haven't gotten the confirmed dates yet um but i but keep an eye on izzy's channel and her twitter because i definitely do want to participate in that actually my next friday reads might also be my grinchathon tbr if everything uh, ends up being the way that I think it is because I planned all the videos for this month so I, I didn't have a slot <laughs> so I might put those two and two together and honestly I'm not reading that much so <laughs>
It's good to have something else to talk about. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. Anyway, so I hope that you've been enjoying the videos, um, you know, this week and uh, the rest for December. Wish me luck on getting complete on that. I think I'm about halfway done filming, um, but there's still a fair amount left to go. So yeah, fingers crossed. Let me know what you are reading. Uh, let me know what you like to read in December. Do you like to finish things off? Do you like to reread? Are, are you a holiday reader? Um, I usually pick a couple short things, but uh, my... Uh, commitment ability to follow anything kind of goes out the window <laughs> it's, just, it's best to work with what's true right I, I think so anyway i hope that you have a wonderful weekend and i'll be back soon with another video take care